Welcome back to part two of the video where we are discussing our changes, our challenges from moving from the United States to Colombia. We're answering 10 questions. So here we go with continuing those. All right, number six, what annoys you about Colombia versus the United States? <sighs> so there are a couple of cultural aspects about my Colombian people that really annoy me. Um, like them not following rules, like it just, it gets like annoying to certain points. Like if you are on a line waiting for something, and if you're not like right next to the other person, like right here, <laughs> invading their personal space, like someone is gonna come and cut you off, like easily. You're gonna be skipped. Yes. <laughs> And that, that annoys me so much. Um, people driving, like, there are no rules driving. Like, you just drive like a crazy person. You, you run stop signs. <laughs> yes. some, sometimes stop lights. <laughs> uh, it's chaotic, that, that part of it. The public culture of, like, it's like they lack, it, it, there's this lack of spatial awareness. Oh. Like in streets when you're walking, like you could literally make eye contact with somebody and you're walking, right? And, and they're not going to move. Like, and, and people walk to the right, you know, they drive to the right side of the road. So you, when you're walking in the street, you're going to walk right. And sometimes I play a game with myself when I'm out in public and it's a little crowded. And I'm like, I want to see like how close we get to running into each other. <laughs> And so I'll just like, I'll kind of keep eye contact with them a little bit. And then it like, it's like the last minute, like one of us decides to give and move out of the way. But they're, you know, like I'm so used to a culture growing up where like you see, oh, I'm clearly going to be in your way. So let me just move to the side a little bit. That just does not happen in mm -hmm. Colombia. And yeah, again, with the lines, people will skip you if you are not obnoxiously close to somebody. Um, and it, you know, you think you, like I, in some places, some regions are different than others and some parts of the cities are different than others. But I mean, I remember being at an exit a grocery store and waiting <laughs> in the, in the, yeah, in the, in the line to get, to get some meat. And this lady, yeah, I was like, there's like literally a foot between me and the other person. And this lady was like, Hey, are you in line? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, it's a lovely And so like, I just ended up stepping so to the point where I was like four inches away from this person in front of me and it just felt like I was just violating their space. But that's so normal here. Yeah. Um, so you find yourself doing it even though it annoys you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What else? Oh, my gosh. There's so many little things that annoy yeah, me. Yeah, you too, cover. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> what? I wrote them down. There was too many. Oh, my God. I forgot. Ordering coffee here can be such a pain in the butt for me. Okay. I like my coffee. In the States, you go into any coffee shop and you're like, hey, I want a, I want a black coffee room for cream. Boom. It comes out perfectly where you have like 90, 95% coffee and then a little bit of room with your cream or they put even put the cream in for you. Perfect. Asking for that here in Colombia is so hard. And the culture is like they, they don't do accommodations or anything. So you'll go to places and I'll ask for like, they call it a tinto. It's specific to Colombia, which I know is wine in, in Spanish. Um, but they, that means black coffee. So tinto, but a lot on the side, I want a little bit of uh, cream, um, leche or something like that. And so like I have to say like cantidad, the amount, uh, 90% por ciento, uh, uh, y, y, uh, tinto y, y diez por ciento. Um, leche. I, I mean, I know I'm saying a lot about this, but it pisses me off um, <laughs> because it's made me mad in multiple occasions. But the point is asking for this is really difficult. And they're like, no, what you want is a cafe con leche. And I'm like, no, because a cafe con leche has like 50% or 60% milk. And then the rest is coffee. That's too much milk. And they're like, okay, so you want, you want a cappuccino. So they, they start yes. to like tell you what you want, what they know is on their menu. And they just don't have this accommodating culture. Um, crepes and waffles is bad, bad, oh, bad yeah, about this, um, especially with ice cream. It's like you may want a specific dessert and you want to switch out. Uh, it's, the ice cream flavor. Yeah. yeah a famous, famous uh, restaurant in Colombia, by the way, crepes and waffles, delicious. But you, you, it's going to be hard for you to sw swap out an uh, ice cream flavor you prefer over what they actually put on the menu. Um, they're just not going to do it. 
Uh, and then they were like, okay, we can bring it without the ice cream and we'll put like on the side the ice cream that you want, but they won't put it on top of your freaking crepe. Like why? You're yeah. still serving the ice cream that I want on a cup. <laughs> yeah. So you have more dishes to wash. <laughs> so, so why don't you just put it on top of my crepe yeah. or my waffle? Like <laughs> There was another situation eating out. We, we went somewhere. We need to can't eat cheese so when we go to a pizza place we always ask for no cheese which is really bizarre for uh, many many colombians um, but they do it but we went to a, uh, a sort of the what was it Soria de amor yeah it, it's Fancy like a high-end italian place yeah. yeah and when he was like i want to get this pizza with uh, without cheese which we've ordered before and this one waiter was like i cannot serve you a pizza without <laughs> cheese i'm just i could never do that <laughs> <laughs> and so he had this, it took forever. He had to go back and forth with the chef in the kitchen and be like, can we make a pizza without cheese? <laughs> and it was just like this big ordeal. And it was like so annoying. Just give me my pizza without cheese. Yeah, it's not that difficult. You're charging me the same. Yeah, it tastes good. Uh, you know, you should try a pizza without cheese. You may be pleasantly surprised how good it tastes. It's good because they, it looks kind of like empty. if They don't put the cheese. So they like add a lot more toppings. Yeah. So it's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there's another one that you wrote down um, and it is like is how it? businesses blast their music. Oh, jeez. The coast <laughs> is worse. Clients. The coast is worse about this. And there are other towns um, and areas of Colombia that are worse than others. Um, but gosh, they, they, they will blast their music to the point where the speaker is like crackling and <laughs> popping and breaking and nobody seems to care and you'll have two businesses next to each other or three all doing the same exact thing and so, so it's chaos so to me it's like this organized chaos that colombians love and <laughs> they just don't think anything of it and it, that drives me crazy so like there are days where i'm like it's just too loud it's too noisy um and i don't have a sense of peace just a fact a numero siete numero seven let's move on to more number positive more, more positive things how has your health changed Ooh, Ooh. that is a good one <laughs> for me i have been on a health journey since about the age, I'm in my mid thirties, um, since the age of about 26, 27, uh, where I really started getting focused on my health. Uh, and over time, I really changed my diet. I've changed a lot of habits and that kind of thing. So for me, I've always made like a, a challenge, an internal mental challenge. It's something I reflect on every day, uh, year over year over year. And I just feel like I'm living a healthier and healthier life. I have more energy now in my mid thirties than I did in my mid twenties uh, because of it. Um, and I really feel that way. Uh, I wake up with a lot of energy, uh, ready, ready to just cease the day. Um, but one of the things that I feel like I have changed this year and I was slowly moving in this direction already in the States was just drinking less, uh, drinking less and less and less. Um, and so ever since we moved from the U S to Colombia, I haven't had my social groups where they would normally get together and drink often. And so I haven't wanted to, I haven't wanted to like have have a beer. So I went the first year, I was like, Hey, I'd have a beer or two on the weekend. That was it. But this year I virtually stopped. I remember having my last drink on April 4th in uh, Tatakoa mm -hmm. with Mamita. Um, and that is the last time I've had uh, a beer and, or any alcohol. Um, and I feel good. I'm sleeping good. So I've literally like, it just feels like there's other things that stimulate my mind and my energy other than alcohol and it just made me realize like alcohol doesn't it, it may stimulate you for a small moment in time and like really loosen you up but you know it makes me sleep bad um the next day i never have as much energy if i just have one drink and i, I it just made me think about these things so i know that's kind of a loaded question but i'm drinking less um at the same time uh one of the things i've been thinking about doing for a long time is getting into strength training so hence the gym we've been going to the gym first thing in the morning uh spending about hour hour and a half uh you know uh working on just getting stronger um, because i want to live a healthy life i want to go into old age and like i want to be a super ager 
and a centenarian. Be a centenarian. Yeah, yeah. A, a super age of somebody. Super age. Uh, no, that, that's a term. Yeah. So somebody who gets to the age age <laughs> so you eighty. Made it up. No, no, it, it's a concept uh, that's that's you can Google, but somebody who gets okay. to like age eighty and they're living very active, vibrant lives. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm like, the only way you get to be a super ager is if you start to live an active, vibrant life now, eating, making the right eating choices, making having the right habits. Um, so because of my isolation from people in the United States, uh, you know, social groups that would cause me to drink or eat cookies <laughs> or chips or something like that, I don't have that as much anymore. So I'm not eating many, many cookies, chips or alcohol. And um, I'm able to, I've, I've been able to focus my energy more on all these healthy activities that make me feel really good. That was a lot. Pot of tea. For me, mm -hmm. I think for me it has been more like mentally, like mental health has improved tremendously because before coming here, like I was really in a very depressive state. Like, um, it was just hard for me to get out of bed. Um, wanting to do anything with you or with friends or um just live life <laughs> yeah it was difficult <laughs> i remember some uh, i remember like a summer there was a summer where whitney just didn't want to get out and do anything i'm like let's go ride bikes let's go do this activity and that's when that's when we started to really think about moving to columbia because i knew that whitney was missing her family and seeing them more often um but one of the barriers we had was that because we wanted to spend I more was than still not a citizen yeah, yeah we wanted to spend more than six months and she only had a green card and like like i was like you got to become a citizen for us to really spend like a year or two um outside of the u.s and so i've seen that that change that's been yeah. really nice oh yeah yeah like i i want to live life every single day now like i i love my life and um, I feel much better. Also in the States, like I, I, I learned what anxiety was because <laughs> <laughs> I did not know, like at the age of 24, I had no idea what anxiety was. Like I had not felt anxious before, but, um, living in the US, I, I developed a lot of anxiety about a lot of silly things. Um, and so like I have learned to like, um, ease my anxiety, like in, with so many like aspects of my life um it's still there for like flying on an airplane <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's not as bad as like it was um previously when i lived in the u.s so i know we made the outline for this but i want to know more about like what because i don't know this what what other anxiety how do you feel like the u.s taught you anxiety well because like you all you constantly had to be hustling like I, I remember like having a conversation with um some moms that i nanny for like their kids um and i was like hey I, i'm kind of busy and like i mentioned hey i have to do this and this and this um and to them was like no that's like nothing like you're not that busy like <laughs> and you're so, available <laughs> yes you 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 have time but to me like coming from colombian culture like I do not like hustling. I like having time for myself, mm -hmm. for my husband, for my family. Um, but to them, it was like, you have plenty of time to keep working and keep hustling. So why are you not doing it? And there was a moment where I was like, maybe I should. And like, that's when like, I worked more 90 hours. I still have my, um, my, corporate job mm -hmm. um and so like i wanted to like do more and more and more and more and because i felt like i needed to do more to fit in yeah um and to feel more respect from yeah. others you don't get that in colombia like in colombia no. they're like oh you took the time off <laughs> awesome like take more time off <laughs> like you're you're more pressured to be like what like if you're pressuring somebody to be more productive is like looked down upon here and in, in the u.s it's looked upon and like you know people want want to see that yeah that's that's super interesting and i i see that a lot and another one like starting the corporate job would be like impressing people like I, I in colombia i mean you don't have the need to impress anyone like you just leave who you are yeah. <laughs> and people they either accept you or they don't but um like in my corporate job like i felt the need to impress people um and and so that was like kind of heavy on me too and it caused me anxiety like going into work 
um, like I develop a lot of stomach issues going into work because like every day I feel like, okay, I need to have a conversation with these persons, um, even if I don't feel like it. Um, because I need to make an impression in their mind so I can like move up like the corporate ladder or whatever um, and yeah yeah I think a lot of Americans live with that yeah they do question eight so what are your top dislikes about the US so now it's my turn to go on about things <laughs> 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 number one um, health insurance Number two, hustle culture. Number three, how fake people can be. Um, number four, massive shootings. Cause like they terrify me. It sucks. Um, how expensive things are. Um, well, specifically Dallas, how flat it is and how like there are no mountains nearby. Like there is no, um, and nature reference that I have oh that's north like I, here I can look at the mountains a big like home oh, that's east <laughs> like I can place myself spatially based on the mountains um, in Dallas all is flat um, <laughs> so you're lost constantly yes I don't, I don't know what's north what's east what's south uh, what else you go well I think of more no I was enjoying listening to this <laughs> what else do you hate yeah you're a US I, citizen it's not hate I dislike you, I dislike I dislike okay, okay. Uh, I dislike like how much people want to talk about politics like come on like geez and it's not even like a good conversation it's like an argument to try to convince you of like their point it's not like hey I would try to listen to your reasoning. Yeah, it's not but, a discussion it's it's uh, just somebody wanted everything. to spew their 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 belief about something that may not actually be educated yeah <laughs> uh, which is difficult <laughs> to listen to how dependent on a car you have to be like if you do not have a car you just don't have a life uh, <laughs> um okay i'll say a couple things um a few things that i dislike about the us is it's a very consumerist type of uh, materialistic culture so like people are always shopping they're always buying crap they don't need um and you don't really see a lot of that here in colombia that you know you see people go to the malls buying stuff but like in the states it's like excessive i mean that's why like amazon started there right and like people just buy stuff to buy stuff it's like what they do in their free time it's very it's very weird when you start to travel the world you're like yeah the, the u.s is a very strange country uh, <laughs> it, when when you think about it that that way um yeah cars you know you have to have a car for most things in in the u.s in most places um so i i've really disliked that growing up and so being in cities and towns in colombia where you don't need that is just very stress relieving so. i have a silly one that i mean it's kind of silly but like how like people do not care how like they go out to the streets or like grocery stores in like their pajamas or like just like <laughs> sandals and socks and um i mean i don't have to see like that's why there's the videos of people at Walmart. <laughs> like, that, that is the want... best example of like people just don't care how they look presented to society. <laughs> <laughs> I said the other thing is that I actually find, you know, Americans pride themselves in working really, really hard at their jobs and at their careers. But if you ask them to go for a walk down the street, they're like, oh my God, you're gonna walk that far? And they like, I just see Americans so lazy now. I'm like, the Americans wouldn't even walk half a mile to get somewhere. They're just like, no, I'm just gonna get in, get in the car. You know, like it, it's just this attitude. And I'm like, well, that's contributing to your poor health. And we know that Americans are not the healthiest they have been historically um, in more recent years, you know, uh, with rising you know, diabetes cancers, uh, obesity, uh, mental health. And a lot of those things are influenced, factually influenced by lifestyle, diet, and that kind of thing. And so things are so convenient in the States that allows you to be incredibly lazy, that you just won't go for a walk. It's a very bizarre to me. And I see that even more now that I've spent two years in Colombia. I guess now that you mentioned that, I don't like how expensive it is to eat healthy um to just get veggies and stuff like it can um, be 
in in how confusing it is to eat healthy because i mean marketing in the us is just this like great I'm thing right it. yeah um <laughs> and so like um it's annoying to me how they market products that may not be super healthy for you as something that's healthy and that you should be eating um, <laughs> we could say that there are lies there are damn lies there are statistics and then there is marketing in, in the in the uh, united states <laughs> <laughs> yeah moving on <laughs> enough hate for now question number nine can you see yourself going back to the united states I know the answer already is different from the two of us, and this might be a bit of a conflict in our marriage currently, which is fine, but I can see myself going back to the United States. Yes, there are parts of the culture and just the environment uh, in cities and towns, and maybe not Dallas, but like I could, I could definitely see myself going someplace close to mountains and probably on the West Coast um, and living there. Uh, a little bit more long term, but I think the more I spend time outside of the U.S., I am like it's very divided. Like, no, I want to keep trying out new places, you yeah. know. But I, I can see ourselves going back. Well, you spoiled my answer, because you know my answer is no. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I would like to experience a more um, slower paced culture. Uh, that's not as anxiety prone, anxiety prone, consumerism prone, uh, just, yeah. But on that note, we do miss like certain products. Yeah. I mean, I still order my skincare yeah, from we, the U S <laughs> so, well, yeah, there's some skincare stuff that it, we like in the U S uh, such as Coca Cola and there's some other brands, uh, beauty counter. And then there are some supplements like by optimizers or freaking magnesium is amazing, but they don't ship internationally. Um, man, I sleep so good because of that stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of other supplements and brands that are only in the U S and Canada. Um, so like we have to figure out how to ship that stuff to us all the time at a, a pretty frequent basis, two or three times a year. Hey, I can see myself going back and visiting. Like, I mean, I still, there are a lot of places I want to see in the United States. Like there are some amazing, like nature places like, you know, Yellowstone. I want to see Zion. Um, I want to go explore a lot of like the West coast. So, I mean, I do want to go back, but I, this moment in my life, I don't see myself living long term in the U.S. I guess it's what So you I don't want to go back into the office and work? No. <laughs> if not the United States, where else can you see yourself going? That's a tough one <laughs> because, uh, I mean, in terms of like living long term, I really want to live in a place that has mountains um, and where we are closer to nature, where we can do more outdoor activities. So like um, to me, it would be like a, a, a place with ideal weather year round where we can get out and we don't have to freeze our asses. <laughs> you don't want to go to Antarctica? No. Hang out with the people? Or Canada. Ones? I don't want to go to Canada. <laughs> I don't want to go to England or London where it's just like gray all the time. Um, so uh, I don't know, maybe um, Italy um, yeah. or Morocco mm. or yeah, maybe like a really small town in Colombia. For me on this one, I, I just want to go other places, see what the world has to offer and experience it for what it is i can't i i just i'm becoming less attached to places with this experience um you know having lived in colombia most of our time in bogota but bouncing from you know multiple parts of colombia and realizing like how many beautiful locations and things there are to do across this country it just makes me more curious about all other places including the u.s like across, across the u.s there are many places i've not experienced in the u.s um, I've been to 10 different states, but that's only like a fifth. I mean, I go back to the U.S. and live long term if we live in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I like that answer.
Thank you all for watching. I know this was a long one. Um, I know there's been plenty of comments asking to, you know, showcase these types of answers to these types of questions. So we really just wanted to like lay it out there for you. So thank you for watching this whole thing and listening to our honest thoughts and opinions. Um, if you have any additional questions, comments, whatever, you know, that, that's why the comment ex section exists. If you want more videos like this, let us know as well in the comment section as well. Like <laughs> and subscribe. Peace and love. Thank you so much.